Hey guys, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get the basics down before solving lots of problems, take my Udemy course, HVAC and Refrigeration Fundamentals. In less than five hours, you'll review all the major topics you need for the PE exam. By the end, you'll actually be excited to start studying. So now we're ready to look at question A, since we know the specific humidity at state two and state three, we can figure out that delta and we can answer the question how much water in pounds per hour is being removed to saturate the cooled air now that we know it's definitely removed. And that's gonna be this formula, mass flow rate of water equals the mass flow rate of air times the difference in the humidity ratio. So humidity ratio at two minus humidity ratio at three and we know both of those values but now the mass flow rate of air is actually a bit interesting. It says it has to be based on 20,000 cubic feet per hour at a temperature of 60 degrees Fahrenheit and a pressure of 14.7. And we also know that it's assumed to be dry air, so we can say a relative humidity of 0%. And I mentioned at the beginning of the problem that there's some process that's happening before state one because the compressor inlet conditions were given to us and it was an atmospheric pressure. It was lower than atmospheric pressure. But the volume flow rate was based on a different temperature and it was based on 14.7, so it was atmospheric pressure. So it's a little confusing what's happening before the compressor. But since we have a lot of information about the volume flow rate and the conditions before it gets to state one, we're gonna use those to figure out what the mass flow rate should be. And then if something's happening between, if you want to call this state zero and state one, fine. We don't necessarily have to know everything about how it comes to be the way it is at state one. Or it could just be by virtue of the fact that there's some suction pressure at the compressor. And if you measure it right at the inlet, it changes the condition slightly. It's not crazy to think that it would be a slightly lower pressure and a higher temperature when it gets here. Although I don't know where the humidity came from because it's based on dry air. So it's, <laughs> I'm making some assumptions here, but I'm gonna get the mass flow rate based on this volume and these conditions. And it is atmospheric, so we can use the psych chart to find the specific volume. And the specific volume is 13.1 cubic feet per pound of dry air. So with that, we could go right into the formula. I do wanna show you an alternative in case the inlet conditions were not atmospheric, because this problem has shown us that when the pressure is not atmospheric, it makes the problem significantly different in how we approach it if you have to do it manually. So let's go back to our ideal gas law for a moment. We say PV equals MRT for an ideal gas. And if we divide both sides by the mass, then this big V over little m becomes specific volume. So this becomes PV little v equals RT. And then we can solve for the specific volume by itself. It's RT over P. And since this is completely dry air, we don't have to worry about the partial pressure of water vapor and all that stuff. It's all just air. So the specific gas constant of air is 53.35 foot pound force divided by pound mass degree Rankine times the temperature of the air, which is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but we have to add 460 to make it Rankine divided by the pressure, which is 14.7. And instead of PSI, I'm gonna write it as pound force per inch squared. So we can square away some of these units because we have feet in the top. So let's do 144 square inches equals one square foot. And then square inches goes away. Pound force goes away. Rankin goes away. And this square feet goes up into the numerator. So we end up with cubic feet per pound mass. And that works out to 13.1 feet cubed per pound. And that's obviously per pound of dry air. So if you're ever faced with a situation where the pressure you're given is not atmospheric pressure, you may have to go through this manual process and you may have to deal with the partial pressures the way we did in previous questions to get that specific volume. But luckily here it's atmospheric, so we pull it right off the psych chart, or in my case, I use the psychometric calculator to get that 13.1. Now we're ready to plug into this formula. So the mass flow rate of water is that volume flow rate, 20,000 cubic feet per hour divided by the specific volume to get it to be a mass flow rate, 13.1 cubic feet per pound. And then the difference between the humidity ratio is 
0.2296 pounds of water per pound of dry air at state 2 minus 0 0.00484 pounds of water per pound of dry air at state 3 after that cooling process. And that works out to a mass flow rate of water, 27.66 pounds of water per hour because the cubic feet cancel and the pounds of dry air cancel. So it ends up being pounds of water per hour, which is exactly what we want. And again, that is water that's been removed. So this has been a hard problem. That's answer A, that's the last one we need. But I think if you can get through this, that's a good sign that you can get through some pretty challenging problems. And I'd be willing to bet you're in a great spot leading up to the exam if you can work on things like this without getting rattled. You'll be in a great space.